Hey guys, how are you? Now, really quick, if you can hear some music in the background and some crazy people singing, I am currently in Atlanta and I am in the conference room. And for some reason, these people are having like a ball out there with a microphone and singing and doing karaoke. But I want to, before we start the episode really quick, let you know that tomorrow, Wednesday at 8 p.m., I will be having a free webinar all about how to launch your podcast within 30 days. So you guys know that I am a podcast coach. I have Idea to Launch Academy and I have now launched over 60 podcasts for different people. So in this free webinar, we'll cover why this is the perfect time to start your podcast, the five phases to launching your podcast in 30 days, how to define your audience, how to build an audience and reach your first 1000 downloads. You guys know I've now been podcasting. It'll be almost two years. Um, yeah, it'll, it's almost two years. And I reached my first 100,000 downloads within the first year. I love, love podcasting within my academy. I have my course, which teaches you exactly what to do to launch your podcast within 30 days. So if you are live during this webinar, I will be sponsoring someone's um, course. So whoever is live here, I will be doing a raffle and choosing someone to do the course for free. I'll sponsor it for you. So again, the description, to, the link will, will be in the description of the show. So it's free. It's a free Q&A at the end. So you'll have however much time you need with me to ask me as many questions as you'd like. I'm going to be there to answer them. I'm going to have my wine or maybe a Moscow mule. I'm going to have something to drink. So you make sure you have something to drink as well. And let's hang out tomorrow live. It's a free webinar all about podcasting. And you guys know I love podcasting. Anyway, I will see you there tomorrow at 8 p.m. And now let's get started with the show. Welcome to the Shit on 30 podcast. This is the weekly show where we discuss and share our unfiltered opinions on topics such as mental health, relationships, sometimes it gets a little kinky and we talk about sex, parenting, and so much more. With me, your host, Carla Gomez. Now, my goal is to get rid of society's expectations about where we should be when we're in our 30s and just free ourselves to live the lives that we've always dreamed of. Now, friends, remember, it is never too late. Welcome back to another episode of Shit I'm 30. This time I'm in Atlanta with a special guest. So I talk to you guys all the time. So I'm a podcast coach and I coach everyone on how to do certain things. And they're like, I'm just so scared to reach out to people. And who am I, who am I going to have come on? Like I'm a nobody. And I tell everybody all the time, I'm a nobody. I was behind a desk for six years. I'm not an accountant. And one day I was like, I want to start a podcast. Started it. And I'm friendly. I'm a little too friendly, according to my boyfriend. So I followed this girl, y'all, and I'm like, she's, no, it was the blog I think I found first. And then I found, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, she's so pretty. I want to follow her. You know how us girls do. And then I think I've had you as a friend now for I don't know how long, but I have on the show today, guys, Shanicia Boswell. Sh- Sh- Shanisha. Shanisha, <laughs> shit. I knew I was going to fuck it up somehow. But there's no age. Is there age? My mom's black. <laughs> She's black. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Gonna yeah. figure it out. So it's Shanisha. Shanisha. Yes. Shanisha. Did they call you anything else? Or everybody calls you Shanisha. Shanisha. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I yeah. don't have a nickname either. I wish I had one. No. But I have I have home nicknames, like family nicknames, which I don't know if I'm gonna <laughs> reveal on this podcast. But <laughs> is, is it cute? It's, is it Yeah, it's cute. Okay, you got, oh you, now you have to tell me. What is it? It's Moo Moo. Moo No, listen. My best friend has, um, I didn't know she had a nickname. She had never told us. Mm-hmm. And one day we were walking down the street and I hear someone say, hey, Puka. And she like walked a little bit faster. And I was like, <laughs> what's going on? The guy, Puka, Puka. And she finally turns around and says, were you never going to tell me? No. They call you Puka? Family <laughs> nicknames. You keep those at home. They stay, they don't come out until you go to my family house. And I know we cool for real. Gotcha. If you know Moo Moo, then we real cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's like my boyfriend. Everybody, call, nobody knows his real name. They don't call him by his name. But I go to his family's house and they'll call him his name and he'll be like, shoot them and I he's like come on now stop it stop, stop it, it. Yeah, seriously <laughs> my name is mm-hmm. <laughs> but anyways thank you so much for coming on thank you for having me I literally just sent you a text and you're like yeah I'll be there I was of like of course that <laughs> I like it yes. <laughs> so thank you I wanted to bring you on first of all so I did meet you from black mom's blog mm-hmm. it's your blog yes but before we get started on like who you are and your entire story we're gonna get into our shit you should know for the week and this month I brought it up because it made me think of you and like everything that you're doing so I don't know if you noticed that here in Atlanta no, not Atlanta um close to Augusta it's called Evans Georgia have you heard of it I have yes. okay so there was a young mother nursing at a Chick-fil-a mm-hmm. and the manager asked her to cover up 
And th- I feel like we keep hearing this more and more. Maybe because mm-hmm. social media, it's making it a bigger thing yeah. than years ago. Mm-hmm. But she was breastfeeding her seven-month-old daughter at a Chick-fil-A in Evans, and she was approached by the store manager. She says that she, she said, I feel as though I have the right to feed my baby however I want, just as any other mother that has a right. So she said she was shocked when they, her nine-year-old was with her, and she's breastfeeding her baby, and he's like, he tries to hand her his jacket. Oh, wow. He's like, here you go so you can cover up because someone else felt uncomfortable in the restaurant. So she's 24 years old. She said at first she was like embarrassed then she got angry. And when she posted on Facebook, it got mm-hmm. all this response and it went viral. So a bunch of women decided to go to this Chick-fil-A and breastfeed their babies. They did a sit in. I love it. I was like. This is so <laughs> dope. I don't have an issue with breastfeeding. Plus, she said she had a breastfeeding tank top mm-hmm. and like a shirt over it. So none of her skin was showing. Nothing so showing. what's the problem? She lives in the South. So I am mm. born and raised in Georgia. When you told me this, I wasn't even surprised. This is really? the South. Like we're still Bible be- Belt. People come to Atlanta and they're like, oh, you know, Georgia's so great. But Atlanta's great because we're a melting pot. As soon as you step outside of 25 and especially Evans, Georgia, anywhere like you know, in the country, mm-hmm. you're going to get those responses from people and it's not okay. No. You know, and I love the fact that they went and did the nursing. You know, we do a nurse a every year and it's for that purpose. We all come. Where do all you go? Of our breastfeeding moms and we pop a titty out. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, not anymore. My daughter's seven, but oh. so it, we host it. We host the event. Right. But we post it, but it's to bring awareness and people wonder why. Should. Yeah. Like, why is there so much online about breastfeeding? Because things like this still happen. I still can't believe that some people still look at a breast feeding right and still think of something sexual yeah you know i get it like it a, a breast can a be breast sexual can be sexual but yeah. you're feeding a child feeding with a child. it and you not, can't even see anything that's the thing when you look the baby's at anybody, covering the nipple yeah when somebody's breastfeeding you don't see anything <laughs> all you see is a baby's head to mom's chest right but it's the perversion of people's minds and that's there's the such perverts part. yeah Oh, That's they're perverse. disgusting. Yeah. And so anyone that ever says like, oh, I don't, I know there's some men that are like, oh, I don't want anyone looking at my wife's titty or whatever. If we're wearing a tank top with a push-up bra, you're probably showing more. You're going to see more. Yeah. Than when you're breastfeeding a baby. It's just, it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So when I saw this, I figured, I'm like, this is definitely something that I would see on your page. Like, oh, oh yeah. you got a problem with this? And now I know, yeah, I go out there and pop titties We out. actually just, I got a lot of shit for this on the tell you on the shit i'm 30 podcast uh, something yes. i got a lot of shit for recently what? you've seen the memes going around like the linkedin facebook tinder mm-hmm. yeah. so we did one a mom's version um i'm gonna pull it up on my phone and show it to you um, we did a mom's version and so for the tinder one and it's really a mockery of what people think right that you right do, right so we did one on instagram and the mom was breastfeeding or sorry no she was pumping and the post got a lot of just mix. You know, people were like, we're upset, take it down. But Amazing. it was a mockery of what people think of mothers in general when it comes to... Literally. <laughs> her boobs are great, though. They're great, right? They're amazing. But it was a mockery of the play right, on, right. you know, breastfeeding, being sexual, and also a play on the fact that moms need to have fun, too. Like, we're having a good time. Um, yes, so, I can pump and then go hang out with you. This is where my sense of humor lies. <laughs> <laughs> and I like it because some people are, take it so serious. They take it so serious, And yeah. it's just relax yeah. just a boob it's just a baby the baby has to eat what you want me to put him on formula right because you're uncomfortable and i'm still going on my date i gotta i gotta do this at the table right <laughs> like come on get right. over it it's not that serious mm-hmm. well moving on from this i i, I can't <laughs> wait until the oh you you don't know maybe the my past but i never wanted to have any more kids yeah you have one daughter right? i have one daughter okay. she's about to be 15 okay so i have now found new love Yay. and i think that i want I've been thinking about having you. You want a baby I with do. you. Yes. <laughs> Men tend to do that to our hormones. I want what? children with you because you love them. You want to reproduce with them. But the thing is that I was, little a, thems. I was in a relationship for six years you before. You didn't like him like that. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't like him. Obviously. it <laughs> no. was. I, I couldn't see myself having a child in that relationship mm-hmm. per se. Um, but this one is just like, bring it on. Yeah. <laughs> I want, I like, I really want this. Mm-hmm. So... I wanted to talk to you about um, what what does it look like for you? Because now I see your page and you have my ovaries jumping. Before <laughs> it didn't, I can watch your page. I'm like, oh, that's a cute baby. Yeah. Keep it scrolling, you know, liking keeps right. going. Now I sit there and I'm like, share. Hey, baby, look at baby. this baby. Yeah, don't you want one? <laughs> I like, know. Girl. Yeah. Ah, yeah, so baby, this is my thing. But I want to start like back with you. Like, mm-hmm. who 
Who are you? Where do you come from? What led you to be here? Because you're 30 now, by the way. I'm 30. Shit, I'm 30. Yes. <laughs> I'll be 31 in two months in March. Did you have that shit moment when you I were 30? I had that 30? shit moment at 25, actually. I didn't oh, have shit. a shit money at th- a moment at 30. I had it at 25 somehow. I turned 25 and I was like, oh my God, my life is coming to an end. Didn't that sound crazy? It was at like my, my quarter thought, century. I don't know. Maybe. At 30, I celebrated the hell out of my birthday. I went to Cuba. I had a manifestation party. I, know, that's I mean, right. I celebrated the entire month of my 30th. I felt like I was like coming into this new realm of adulthood. Because you are. I am. Yeah. It felt good. I mean, I've always kind of looked at aging like it gets better with time. Well, so you I, don't look a day past 22. Thank you, girl. So. Thank you. Uh, give me some tips later I got on. some makeup on. But okay. <laughs> no. There's not a wrinkle on your face. <laughs> but it was just a thing. Like I turned 30 and, you know, so uh, a little bit about my background. Mm-hmm. Born and raised in Georgia. I've been in Atlanta for 12 years. Um, I went to school here and... And I just felt like I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. Like I always knew I wanted to work for myself, but I was kind of torn between being housewife, house mom Mm. to having this career. And so I got pregnant with my daughter at 22 years old and I was a stay at home mom during that time. But I felt like something was missing. I was giving everything to my family at the time. It's so hard to be um, And so I started mom. a skincare business here in Atlanta. I had it for two years. Nice. And I put it on hiatus. It was my first business. It taught me a lot. But during the course of that, I learned social media. And I fell mm. in love with the connection of the internet. Like how we're sitting here, y'all. I've known Carla <laughs> online for a long time. And now we're sitting right here. I see her walking up. And we're yeah. like, hey, girl, give it me was a hug. What's up? Thing. Right. We're like, oh, my God, you've been my friend in my head for all this time. <laughs> and now, so that was what I loved mm-hmm. about the internet. And so living in Atlanta, I live in Midtown. I just wasn't seeing a lot of positive black representation when it came Mm. to parenthood. And so black mom's blog was started four years ago at a very pivotal time when it came to blogging. Like now it's kind of hard to get into it. Like you kind of already have to have something established, but back then it was not a thing. And there definitely wasn't a platform, a blog platform that was specifically dedicated to parenting culture and lifestyle from a black mom's point of view, unapologetically. So there were, yeah, there were black mom bloggers out there, Mm -hmm. but they weren't necessarily talking about their race or talking about these Mm -hmm. things. You know, it was more so like, I'm a black mom and this is what I'm going through, but we know our experiences are just different, you know? And so I created this platform and it literally just took off like wildfire. I mean, I think in eight months I had got about 40,000 followers. Wow. Which nowadays that's not even and that is back in what year this was in 2015 2016 sorry 2016 and so um it just blew up and so i started doing meetups i started here in atlanta and they were super simple i mean i would be like hey y'all we're gonna meet at the park and i would have 30 or 40 moms come out with their kids and i was like oh well, I'm going to New York. Let's see if I can do this in New York. And then it happened in California. And then I went to Toronto wow. and New Orleans and Philly. And so it's just kind of spun off from there. And then I started a retreat company where I would take these women on these self-care retreats. But all of this blossomed because of Black Mom's blog. Right. So. That's, there's a name to the retreat because you're about, yes. about to have one coming up, right? Yes, I have four well, coming up over the just summer. Kidding. Just four. <laughs> Just for and you're thinking about starting a podcast, girl. I know I'm not. Stop listen, it. I told you I had my hand in eight pots. So Literally. right now the podcast is just sitting there in my mind, but it's a far off plan right. for me right now. I don't have the time. Yeah, no, that you have a lot going. On. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. That this is something that I I speak about all the time because some people think it's weird mm-hmm. to create friendships online. No, but there are those catfish and those weird people. But I don't. Yeah. I feel like that's you can build genuine friendships with mm-hmm. people off the internet, and it's so dope that you can literally. I'm. So I've become a little afraid of meeting people. Like, (laughs) I don't know. I've gotten this, like, paranoia of maybe they're expecting for me to be the same person that I'm on the show at all times. Yeah. So it's like, am I going to disappoint you? Are you going to be Beyonce or Sasha Fierce today? (laughs) Right. (laughs) And I had my first live show. I had 110 people Mm -hmm. seven months in. So I'm hitting two years now, and I haven't done one again. Yeah. Or a meetup or anything like that, because I don't know. I'm just... I'm scared. You know what it is, though? I I used to have that anxiety. Mm -hmm. Like, I would do these events, and I would have all these women come out. And I would find myself the entire time trying to go to each and every person. Are you okay? Are you okay? You're having a good time? Are you okay? And by the end of it, I would be so exhausted. And someone that I really admire, um, she had an event a few years ago. And I went to her event. And I just kind of watched how she moved. Mm -hmm. And I realized that 
when you have an event, you let the event run itself. In the sense of, if you're inviting mm. 50 people into a room, those 50 people are going to converse. They're going to talk. They're going to meet their friends. You don't have to be everything. You don't have to hold space for every single person. You create the space and then allow people to, you know, talk and communicate and you know meet each other and you just kind of sit back and you enjoy your event from that space so every event that I do I carry that mindset now I'm like hey you know I'm at this event but I'm also a participant so I'm gonna relax I'm gonna sit down I'm gonna smile and say hi I'm gonna go speak to some people but I'm not going to try to control and I think it's a control thing in your mind you're like I need it to go well so I need to go check in with every single person but if you just kind of sit back and watch you're gonna notice that people are going to naturally just talk to each other right there Therapist used the word perfectionist instead. I like you're not therapist. a control freak. You're, you're a just perfectionist. a perfectionist. <laughs> yes. The state of all mothers. Yes, which mm-hmm. comes it comes with a downfall because mm-hmm. I have to learn how to let go. Yeah. Like right now, I'm trying to figure out how to delegate certain things. So I have a new oh girl, God, Jasmine. Yes. Shout out to her. I know mm-hmm. she listens to help me with certain things. She's like, I'm going to help you. But even now, I'm thinking when this show is over, I'm supposed to send her the audio. I'm like, do I send it? Do I just do it myself? <laughs> it's so much easier if I do it myself, right. you know? Mm-hmm. But I need to learn how to delegate certain things so I yeah. can grow myself. Right. So, anyway, you move to Atlanta, you become this, like, person everyone's looking for as black moms. Yeah. Like, that's... <laughs> I became that's the so- black mom of America. When Oprah said it, I was like, boom. Wait, okay. Oprah said that about no, you? No, okay, Oprah didn't say that, but I was on OWN Network. Oh, for, <laughs> let me clarify before Oprah comes for us. No, Oprah verbally did not say this, but I did get invited to do OWN Network, her network, um, right. as a, as it relates to motherhood. That's so, Oprah. That's Oprah. I just, you know, uh, no. not out of her mouth. No, she she was thinking it. <laughs> she was thinking she it. She thought yeah. it when, she, when they brought her you on. Her people said, come, Shanisha, yeah, we're calling you. Because we're Oprah said you. so. Yes, of course. Oprah said so. <laughs> so you had, um, what's your daughter's name? Cameron. Cameron. Mm-hmm. You had her at 23. I, I had, had her at 23. At yep. 18, which is really young. Yeah. But I know I've heard you talk about this loneliness as a mom. Oh, my when God. When you first had her, because yes. I, I mean, I was a little bit younger, mm-hmm. but 23 is still young. Yes. So it's like, what what, what was that? For me, it's, it sucked. I left the church. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't relate to her friend's parents. They were right. all old. They were older. Even nowadays. Mm-hmm. Like, going, it's like, I'm now I'm 32. It's like, oh, you're a regular age. Yeah. But to have a 15-year-old, their parents are in their 60s. Right. So, yeah. or in their 50s. Mm-hmm. So how was that for you being like that lonely state? Because I feel like that might have also driven you to create this community that you created. Yeah, exactly. So like getting pregnant at 22, I always yes. related to, it felt like being pregnant in high school because it was really? a different type of school. I was in college at that mm. point. So while my friends were graduating and at that point, everybody was traveling around the world and going to parties, I was pregnant and breastfeeding and, you know, Yikes. being home with my daughter. And so it was hard because I had to it kind of like re- I had to reframe my mind and mm. learn to carp- um, compartmentalize my friendships. Mm. And so I started to look for new moms to hang out with it. That was a reason behind Black Moms Blog as well, is looking for people that look like me that I could relate to that right. were also in my age group. And I realized that my friends that I had before then, it wasn't that they didn't matter anymore. They just fit in a different compartment. They were right. still important, but it was time for me to make some mom friends because I knew how important it was to build that village. Right. And even when I talk to moms now and they're like, I'm so lonely. And I'm like, well, who are your five closest friends? And they're naming people that party all the time, or it's like my life isn't like that anymore. I need right. people that I could relate to. But and this is it really was important, not just to moms, because I know in general, business that I have everything. I, t- I had this on Patreon with my friend um, Jenna, and we were talking about friendships and mm-hmm. making friends in your 30s. Mm-hmm. And so not only you're young and a mom, but now you turn into your 30s, and maybe you're thinking about business, or you right. get into a relationship, or or you be- start a family, and you realize. Those friends that I was hanging out with, they're still partying. Yeah. They're still hanging out. They're mm-hmm. still going on dates. And now you have a different life. So you have to put yeah. them in that in that section of your mm-hmm. of your life. Well, when I decide to go out once a month or whenever yeah, it is, we'll see them I'll then. call them. And then also as you become an adult, you're less um, you're not forced into I guess like group situations Mm -hmm. like you know most of your friends are from school or from college or from work you're placed in these institutions where you have closeness Mm -hmm. and when you hit your 30s especially if you're an entrepreneur you don't have to come outside if you don't want to so you have to be very (laughs) intentional about friendships and you choose who am I spending my time with because I don't have to see you you know what I mean like I don't have to see you I have to you know actually make a plan to see you so you're not being forced to make friendships anymore right. so you become more intentional about who you spend your time and with that's and that's the word being intentional mm-hmm. about who you because my time is worth a lot yes so too. i tell people like i think it was recently i did um a speech 
uh, a public speaking engagement and they were telling me how, you know, I learned how to do everything for free on Google. And it's like, yeah, everything's free. But then I said, at the same time, it's not free. No. Because it took me months yeah. to learn what I'm doing now. One of my favorite quotes, you've probably seen this meme and it says, if you're paying me for something, you're paying me, if you're paying me for something, it takes me 30 minutes to do. Mm-hmm. You're not paying me for the minutes, you're paying me for the time that it's been, it took me to learn how to do that certain thing. Correct. So if it took me 10 years to learn how to run this podcast efficiently, but I can teach it to you in, in an hour, you're still paying me for those 10 years that it took me to learn this craft. Literally, like what has taken me to lead me here two years later, I'm teaching now people to be able to do it in 30 days. Exactly. Without the microphone issues that I had, without right. losing you audio. Right, trial and error. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And let me tell you, mm-hmm. there were a lot of errors, mm-hmm. which I'm sure with you saying, like you're starting, <laughs> putting on events and doing, how many, how many things that do fuck up really oh my god <laughs> i went through three different websites i have went through i mean just a handful of things and, I, and, and, and yeah it's more than a handful it's a ton i've went through a lot time spent right. hours everything so it takes time to get to this point yeah so going um like to finish off on the friendship aspect of it mm-hmm. and the mother aspect of it when you become a mother when you become a wife when you get into a relationship whatever it is you have to kind of switch those friendships yes, and do. it's not get rid of them necessarily yes. unless they're bringing you back or they're not accepting who you are now evolving into. Because I don't think it's changing. No, you just see you're evolving. Right. And, you know, people are like, oh, you changed. Well, I hope so. If you're the same person that you were when I knew you five years ago, there's a problem. Huge There's nothing wrong. And anybody who is challenging you on that, you know, maybe it's time for you to rethink about their friendship. And, of course, there's constructive criticism and things like that. But, you know, if you're if you're growing in your life and you've gotten into a new relationship or you become a mother, if you started a business and people are trying to hold you accountable for who you were four or five years ago, right. it's time for you to rethink your friendships and relationships with that person. It just is. It's over. Yeah. I have to now, like, take that into consideration because I feel like my last six years in a relationship, I was very... Um, I did whatever the hell I wanted to do. I said, I wish you would tell me no. <laughs> so, I mean, I had like my things. It's like, oh, you know, he'll come out with me. But a lot of things have changed for me now. And I yeah. I can't think of it. I think of it as, is it making me better? Mm-hmm. You know, am I doing this for the better of me? Am I moving forward? And I know with you, you've had this persona or not persona or this narrative yeah. of a single mom for so many years. Mm-hmm. So I know we were on the phone and you're like, oh, I started dating. Yeah. <laughs> Look at us smile. Oh, boyfriend and he's amazing. A whole boyfriend. A whole boyfriend. <laughs> How long were you single for? Um, I was single for three and a half years. Shit. Girl, I don't know what being single is. Three and a half. And this, okay, I just want to say, this is the first time I've actually announced that I'm in a relationship because the internet scares me when it comes to your personal business. Terrifying. It's so terrifying. But yeah, I'm in a relationship now and he's amazing and um it's funny how you said about having to change things Mm -hmm. you know we're we're great but one of the things i did have to explain to him was i was like i've been single for three and a half years almost it would have been almost been four years that i've been out of a relationship like a serious relationship and it's a relearning process of learning you know friendship boundaries you know going out all the time and just having to consider another person because as mothers were such control freaks, I'm used to having to tell my daughter what to do and handle this. And you want to tell him what to do now. Yeah. Well, not even, I, you know, I'm not that kind of woman necessarily. I kind of like to sit back. I'm Southern. So I'm like, there's oh. a thing, there's a thing with Southern women. We'll just sit back and let you handle it, you know, but it's still having to consider a man mm-hmm. that's something I haven't had to do in a very long time. Even your own space and your own time. You're yes. used to everything is on your time when you like, you control right. your time. Now it's like, I have to give you some of my time. Yeah. I mean, girl, no, that's not a problem. Either. I don't want you that. Like it. <laughs> take it. Take all of it. Yeah, for, I, I'm completely opposite. Yeah. I'm, I am from the South. I'm not a yeah. Southern belle. <laughs> I want to tell people what to do, how to do it. I'm mm-hmm. so perfectionist. Mm-hmm. It's got um, me in trouble in the past because I'm like, you're a man. You got that. Oh, you're my man. You definitely got that, right? <laughs> <laughs> what do you what, what do you want me to do? So <laughs> I I I didn't have that before. I've yeah. always worn the pants. So now it's like he's like put the skirt on, girl. Yeah, put because on the skirt, I'm handsome. So it's, it's a learning process for me to be the woman in the relationship. But I'm I'm loving it. I'm yeah. loving every second of it, and I'm learning that it's not that I'm being like it's not that he's controlling me or no. he's making no because and nothing is taking money away from my pocket or right. putting me in a bad position. But I don't know. It's like when you come from a na- yours was single. Me was I don't give a hell about what you say <laughs> now getting into the switch but it makes it so new yeah. but you have your baby girl yes. so i don't know if you want to say but has it been a while that you guys have been dating um no it's, it's it hasn't been a while it hasn't been a super long time but it's going 
in a really good intentional direction. Do you feel that now dating now you're in your 30s? Mm -hmm. It's different. Oh yeah, it's definitely with intention. Like marriage was one of the first few things that we talked about. Wait, it's right away? Yeah. Oh. It was very intentional. <laughs> well, I, I we talk about it now, mm-hmm. and it's everything has happened so fast. We were friends for for yeah. almost a year before we started dating, mm-hmm. um, but we talk about all these things, and I'm like, why don't people talk about this? Do you want kids? Do you want to get married? Right. How do you want this to go? How, how do you feel about me going out? How do you feel about A, B, C, and D? You have mm-hmm. to talk about all these things because if not, what you're just fucking yeah, and going to dates. Though. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, but I think look at our society now, that's the acceptable thing. And there's nothing wrong. I want to make that known. There's right, nothing right. wrong with how anybody wants to do things, but there's also nothing wrong with saying, I want to get married. Mm-hmm. And I feel like with women now, we are in this state where if a woman wants to get married, you're kind of embarrassed to say that. You don't want to say that out loud. Yeah. You just want to be like, I'm okay. And I don't need a man and it's fine. And if he comes along, he comes along, but everything else we have to work for why don't we have to work towards the goal, at least mentally and manifesting a husband or a partner, whatever it is mm-hmm. that you want, but it's something that does take intention. It, it a lot of intention in everything that you do on a daily basis. So I, my, my, one of my best friends, Mandy, she is, we're complete opposites. Mm-hmm. So she has a podcast, Horrible Decisions. <laughs> <laughs> so. Shit, I'm 30. Horrible Decisions. Yes. So <laughs> she's, her and hers is like horrible. Oh. So, right. So okay. she is very much into casual datings, open relationships. Yeah. We're very, very, I mean, completely opposites Mm -hmm. in that aspect of our life we're very we're very similar business-wise and like our creativity so she's just like I was telling her you know my boyfriend and I we're building a business and we're doing things from the ground up and he's like has all these ideas and I'm like all right I'll build it with you and they're like nah I want a man that's just gonna be like the business here go ahead and run it right no but I'm like Mm -hmm. I'm okay so I was with her Mm -hmm. and a friend of hers and they were telling me um so basically you're his mom so you're not like no I'm I want a partner and you got to be careful of that, too. Like, you know, what you do in your relationship is your business. Mm-hmm. You'll never hear me go into the depths of any relationship because that's my right. personal of business. And, you know, the way that we operate in our relationships, if that works for them to do it that way, and if it works for you, right, don't right. let anybody try to convince you oh, of no. how, you know, it's like, no, I'm not his mom. And that's very offensive anyways to even say. Well, I don't get, offended. I don't get offended easily. And I let, when I speak on certain things, I don't mind other yeah. people saying whatever. I just be like... I right. like it though. I'm happy. <laughs> I'm you don't have so to carry that happy. Bag. I'm cool carrying that one. Right, okay. right. I like it, but I want I say this because I know there are women out there that have those friends that are so different. Yeah. And it's totally fine it's to okay, yeah. want to be immersed in that relationship if it's good for you, if, if it's, it's good building you. you. Yes. Now, if it's somebody that you can't go out, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. We got into this into the conversation where I, I would drink this past time I drink a lot. And I like <laughs> to drink. But now he's like, how about you like hold back a little on the alcohol and drink right. wine more? Yeah. And I was like, well, you know what? You're right. And I've actually felt better. Yeah. I still have my drinks. It's not like he told me not to drink. So some people might be like, is he telling you you can't drink? No, he's actually trying to look out for my health. He's actually looking out for my health. If, if, if it were, if it were, um, and we're all in the sisterhood realm mm-hmm. right now, which is great. But Love if it. it were your female friend saying to you, Hey, maybe, you know, you want to not drink so much. Mm-hmm. It'd be, Oh great. She loves you. But if it's your man, he's the narrative you. is he's controlling. And it's like, no. And one thing that my boyfriend said to me recently, he was like, I'm your man, not your enemy. And I was like, okay <laughs> what do you say <laughs> okay you can't say but anything you back. can't say anything back like you have to trust that the person that you're with is looking out for your best right. interests and you have to consider them and that's the biggest life. thing do you trust that person right do you trust that person if you trust them right you know nothing anybody else has matters nothing anybody else says is gonna matter it you just gotta move what you gotta but i'm do. so transparent with my relationship just because i know there are people that are going through the same thing maybe getting judged or saying you're moving too fast that's another mm-hmm. big one you're moving too fast well, bitch i'm 32 i'm 32 <laughs> And he's 36. What the hell do you want me to do? Right, what 40? do you want me to do? I did an episode where it said, so I'll ask you the question. How long do you think you have to date someone before you know, like, they're the one or you expect at least to be engaged? Um, I think that you can know right away if somebody's the one. Mm-hmm. And I say that because, like you said, in your 30s, you move with intention. Very much. And so, honestly, any two people can work if they both put forth intention and consideration. Mm-hmm. Anything can work. And I think relationships work best with goals. Yes. So you each have to have goals together and goals separately, things to look forward to and work towards. And as long as you're doing that with each other, I think that it can work. So to that question, yes, I think immediately – you can know if somebody's the one. And I feel like as a woman, you should put a year on engagement. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. I said the same thing. Yeah. I said a year. A year. For engagement. And eight by the 18 months, you should definitely, like, I said 12 to 18 months. Mm-hmm. 
I know if I want to be with you or yeah, not. Yeah, you know right away. And people, they, they're they together for four or five years. And then they're like, oh, or it's six, not working out. Six like years. We're together for six years. Oh, it just wasn't working out. You've spent all your good years. Now you're tired of each other. And now you go. If you're I was married, a bad bitch in my, when I was like 28, <laughs> 29. You hear me? <laughs> Nobody got to see that. Because <laughs> I was in a relationship. <laughs> No, but I said up to 18 months. 18 months, if there's not a rock on my finger, what am I with you for? What are you doing? Yeah, you're wasting time. And you I'm know? getting older and older. And every time yeah. I'm like, I might need like Botox, like a re Botox. <laughs> or like, but I mean, it's just also when you're in your 30s, you are at a place where I'd imagine you are actually okay with where you are. Your business yeah. might be going great. Mm-hmm. You want to go on vacation. You want to do that with somebody you love. You I might want to have more kids. Uh, I cannot believe you know? I'm actually saying I want yeah. more kids. You want a partner, kid. a kid, an extra kid. kid. You want one extra kid? One extra, one extra kid. kid. Just one. Just one. I'm good with one. He wants more, but I'm good with yeah, one. Yeah, one extra baby. We got <laughs> one already, you know. Yeah. But you want somebody to share those things with. And so, yeah, I mean, there's, you want to know. I don't have time. And I mean that. Like, I had a guy once that I, you know, we were, like, talking a little bit. And I was very upfront in the beginning. I was like, I want to get married. And, of course, we ended up not going that route or whatever. Mm -hmm. I've known this guy for 10 years. Um, And so he came to me one day. He was just like, you know, you're real serious about that marriage thing. And I feel bad because men don't move that way. I said, it's a no for you. I was like, there's a man out there that that's a yes for. A thousand percent. Like, me and you just don't work. You're going to find a woman that you can date and play games with for the next eight years, but I'm not her. Right. And so you just got to know that. I think there's a person out there for everyone. I think this relationship has showed me your person is out there. Don't your I? Your person I is settled. out there. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh yeah. We Teacher, settled I, a lot. I settled, mm-hmm. and I thought that I could turn this person into something that I wanted and change him. All right, sir. You all right down there? So loud. Sheesh. These cars. Oh, wow. Is that a southern thing? That's a southern thing. That's in Atlanta. <laughs> Wait, to come in the summer, okay? He gonna have outcast blast and players ball. Oh, we have it in Orlando too. Like the 26 <laughs> inch rim still spinning. Yeah, still spinning. <laughs> With still the spinning. Impala's 96. All of it. <laughs> so loud. Um. Yeah. So we try to change men to fit the mold that what we're looking for maybe he'll be more affectionate or maybe we feel like i think it's women we're always being told that our standards are too high yes and i realize even in the relationship that i'm in now every relationship i had before this was me settling it was mm-hmm. me feeling like oh my god my standards are too high i'm crazy to want these things right. i there's nobody out there that's gonna want to love like i love and I met somebody who loves just like I love. Exactly. That they wants have the, the same, same things language. that I want. We have the same love language. You know, we communicate in the in the manner mm-hmm. of I don't feel bad for expressing myself. He right. expresses himself. There's such clear communication in that way. But I, for a long time, I didn't think it was possible. And you felt that's exactly what it is. You didn't think it was possible Mm-mm. because I didn't think it was possible. I'm like, listen, I'm just difficult. I'm difficult. I'm right. very rough when I speak. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I'm very passionate. Everything that I do. I'm so it comes out as in I'm angry. I'm fighting. Mm-hmm. I cuss too much. So most men that I've dealt with is like, you're so disrespectful. Or you don't talk to a man like that. This guy gets it. He gets it. Yeah. I'll go off and he'll just look at me and he'll be like, let me know when you're done. <laughs> and I'll be like, okay, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> that's all I need. I just need you to acknowledge me. <laughs> yes, that's yeah. it. And probably I, won't stand for it either. He'll probably check you when you go too far. He'll listen, be like, listen, yeah, what like, you trying to do? Sorry, daddy. <laughs> I didn't, mean, I didn't mean to my bad <laughs> quick before I be like what you want to fight right now I'm like okay just kidding <laughs> I get it but once I go there he's like let's talk about it and I'm like oh thank you I just yeah. wanted to talk I, just I felt like talk. you weren't understanding me but it takes that right person the perfect person I say the perfectly imperfect person yeah to I understand like who you are mm-hmm. because he's not perfect by any chance I'm not perfect right. I do some really fucked up things sometimes but we have that person there, but then you and I both have kids. So how do yes. you introduce this now to this new relationship? So we've been actually talking about this and just starting it off very smooth, like mm-hmm. dinner, park, safe spaces for the child, mm-hmm. you know, where she feels comfortable and very light. You know, sometimes it's over the phone and we might FaceTime together. We might have little conversations, oh. but for children, they just need to know that this is a safe person. Right. You know what I mean? And so for my daughter, it's just introducing her to this safe person that can be her friend Mm -hmm. and I like I told him you know he doesn't have any kids and he was like I don't know how to do this you know what do I do I need it you know I want to learn from you is he in his 30s also yes he's in his 30s um and so I told him I said you just need to be her friend and you and her do have to form your own relationship especially we're talking about getting married and all living in the same home you and her have to form a relationship Mm -hmm. with each other that's even outside of me and that comes with time but it's really just about introducing your child to your new partner in a safe space. A park is a very safe space. Right. A restaurant is a very 
very safe space. You know, the child may not need to see the person in the home right away, but just right. in spaces where they can find a way to kind of get to know them on their own turf. And that relationship that you speak of is so important because I spent like, I keep talking about this and every time I do, I'm like, oh, I was so stupid because my last relationship didn't have a relationship like that with my daughter. Mm-hmm. So it was like, she loved him. He loved her. They were there. They were together all the time. All right, fine. But there was nothing with, them. I don't know. There wasn't anything there. And I, I wanted, and I prayed for a man that she could see as a, as a, a male father figure. figure. Yes. Yeah. Cause she, she has her dad. He yeah. might not be as active as we were like, not active mm-hmm. at all like that. But he doesn't need to be her father, but I still wanted a father figure. Yeah, the father figure. Yes, I so struggle important. so hard with my daughter because her dad's not active like that. Mm-hmm. And then my father passed away three years ago. So I knew she was going to have this daddy issues. And she does have her daddy issues. Mm-hmm. So now she's about to be 15. Boys, hormones, and asking for attention. So actually just two days ago, Ayana, she likes this boy now in high school. And mm-hmm. she's calling him her boyfriend. Ooh. I'm not ready. I talked about it on live a week ago. I have been crying my eyes oh, yeah, out. I'm not ready. For I that. even <laughs> took a mental health break last week from this podcast. I could. I have been struggling. I actually went. I was going through a fast. Today's my last day of my fast. Three mm-hmm. week fast. And um, I think when you go through a fast, I don't know if you're spiritual at all, but it, you just feel like a lot of things start like yes. happening. And I felt like there's voices and my imposter syndrome is coming back and not feeling worthy. And it's like wanting me to quit. And I know it's like the devil just trying to get in my ear. Yeah. But then let's add to that. Ayana coming home talking about she got a boyfriend. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you have a what? With who? For what? I'm happy she told you. So she's very open. That's what he's telling me. He's like, mm-hmm. at least she's talking she's to talking us. She's talking to you. But they've created this bond over the past seven months that honestly makes me cry every single time Aww. because they're talking and she's like, you know, guys, I love you. And then I, he's, we're on speakerphone, but at one point he takes the phone and he's talking to her for like five minutes. And I was like, no one, not her dad, not my ex, like not my father never got the chance to gets to speak to her like that. Right. You know? And I was like, this is all something I prayed for. And I didn't think it was possible because right. we think as single moms, that's not their kid. I think, and when it comes to dating, a man isn't just, when you're dating a mother, mm-hmm. you're not just dating her, you're dating, or, mm, that's not the right word. You are <laughs> forming a relationship with her it's child. It's a package. It's a We're package, a package deal. Yeah. And so a man has to understand that coming into it, like you said, Ayana may have her father, but you are also mm-hmm. serving as a father figure to her mm-hmm. as well. And she has to be able to trust you. Yes. And you have to be able to trust him because you're all going to be under the same <laughs> roof one day. Yes. It's that's so the important. Thing, especially with a daughter. Yes. You have a daughter and you're introducing a a man that's not you know biologically her father shoot Mm -hmm. excuse me and you hear all these stories and we have to be so careful and i know you're dealing with all these mothers i'm probably you probably hear horror stories of what can happen so to me i'm always very wary of that but she does have like recently she was was in trouble i whooped her ass (laughs) and she's just like i want to talk to wax and calls him crying and then they're like well let's pray about it i'll talk to mom and i was like I I didn't even need to be around and I felt comfortable with it. Right. So I feel like don't, whoever's listening out there in a relationship where they don't feel like they have that bond, don't settle for that. That, That's not the person. Nope. If they can't be close to you and your child. Right. They have to form their own separate relationship with your child. And I grew up with a stepfather. How was that relationship? We're great. And I'm not going to lie to you. It hasn't always been great, but Mm -hmm. not because of not being close. There were just personal things that happened within my family. If he would have been my father, it would have been the same way. But one of my favorite memories of my stepfather, my mother and him, they got married when I was in fourth grade, fifth grade. And when he used to come home from work, we'd sit there and like do the bills together. You know what I mean? Like, and so my stepfather, like I said, I'm from the South. He's very country you know he pays the bills he does the yard he take that's how he shows his love and affection right. and i've always kidded with him because as he's gotten older he's got much more emotional like he cries on the phone now and Aww. you know it's very cute but um <laughs> you know we went through a period where we didn't talk for a few years because of something wow. that happened and when i got pregnant with my daughter i went to him and i was like hey you are going to be her grandfather right and i don't need her asking me why we don't speak Right. And that's how we rebuilt our relationship. And that was seven years ago. Kids bring families together. They do. So I have, when my daughter was born, I feel like my family, I was rebellious as hell. Me too. When I was in high school. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Mine was <laughs> fighting and like just, I was so defiant, especially towards my mother. Her and I have never had this close relationship. Although, because my dad and I were so, so close. And my dad was an amazing dad, not the best husband. Yeah. So I was just like him. And I think I reminded her a lot of him. So for whatever reason, we've never been like the closest, but we were still a close knit family. Um, my dad was out here being a hoe. 
<laughs> or doing what he's what he would always do. But my daughter brought the sense of closeness to everyone. So yes. everybody got so close because mm -hmm. of her. Now my father passes away. We have I haven't spoken to my mother in two years, over two years. The relationship is just the family's just broken. And now I have a really hard time thinking of having a new child. One, having a new baby without my father, having a baby without my family. Mm -hmm. So is it is this baby going to do the same thing that my first one did? Right. Could it do it? Could it not do it? Oh my I can't even talk about it for long. I feel start. you on that. I feel that way too. I do you have your biological father? No. Okay. Mm -mm. My biological father was Kind of around, but not really. You know what? No, I'm giving him way too much credit. <laughs> he was not there <laughs> at all. He wasn't there. My stepfather is my father, mm -hmm. so to speak. And I call him my stepfather just because, I mean, that's what I've called him. I call him mm -hmm. by his first name, but he's my father. He's the one that has been there with me my whole life. Right. He participated in raising me. He is the most amazing grandfather to my daughter. That's they have, amazing. you know, that's her papa. They have the right. greatest relationship. And so, you know, I think for me, it's more so like you go through pregnancy once and it may mm -hmm. not be the best experience and you tie all these things to that. So when right. it comes to thinking about a new pregnancy, that fear, is this going to be the same way? Is it going to turn into that? Mm -hmm. And really, it's projecting this guilt. And my yeah. partner now, he says that to me all the time. Don't put me in that box of projecting that guilt. I'm not that person. Right. You know, and you have to be it's very really careful hard. of that as a woman because we do, though. I know? have this fear and I tell my there, I would tell my therapist, I'm like, I'm scared of being a single mom again. Yeah. You know, and she's like, well, marriage won't take that away. You can get married and get divorced. And I'm like, okay. But she's like, yeah. And, or you can be married and completely happy. <coughs> <laughs> and, you know, God forbid something happens to him, we're mortal. He could be gone. And that'll keep you as a, as a single mother as well. Yeah. So there's all these reasons where she's like, you're holding yourself back from, holy crap. <coughs> <coughs> I feel like this little thing in the back of my throat. <laughs> so I can't hold that fear of being a single mom because there's so many other reasons outside of a relationship so I'm not working reasons, out. Yeah. She's like, now just look at his character. How is he going to be as a father? How mm -hmm. do you think? He's, you still won't know. Because I didn't think my daughter's dad, after we got married and were together for seven years, mm -hmm. would just up and leave and stop. You know, I had yeah. no idea. I'm like, you didn't even get, you weren't raised like that. You had your parents, mm -hmm. you know, but now he's just like, until the court tells me I got to be there, I ain't gonna be there. And it's one Ooh. weekend a month, 48 hours. A month? A month. <coughs> Y'all, we about to take this podcast somewhere else because well, we're not gonna do that today. We're not. 48 hours. A wow. month. And there's some months that he's just like, I can't come. And I'm like, all right, now he did do, um, which I was shocked, one month this summer, but I knew it's because he has a newborn. Ayana's 14, she can help with a newborn. Um, he did a week here and there, so I'm like, you didn't do that before. But whatever, for whatever reason it is that you kept her for a month or kept her for a week, I'm okay with it. Yeah, She's building that relationship with you, but it's still not there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's really hard for me to focus on starting a new family because what I have a picture of of what I did before is not there anymore. Yeah. So that's really hard to do. Now, since we did talk about marriage, I do have uh, to talk about something really <laughs> quick because it is engagement season. It is engagement season. Did you know season. that? I didn't even realize yeah, that there is a nice season. Yeah, fall weddings and the right. next summer weddings. So yeah. I think it starts around Thanksgiving time mm -hmm. until Valentine's yeah, Day. Yeah, those holidays, Thanksgiving, or sorry, um, Christmas, New Year's, um, Always New Valentine's. Year's. Valentine's. Yeah. So it's engagement season. So I've been telling you guys that it is, but I mean, I don't have to tell people that it's engagement season because we're seeing on social media. I have like, I see people that are getting engaged and I'm like, I'm, I don't know if I'm happy for you if I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I think I want to. Don't be jealous. Too. It's coming. It's no, coming. it's coming. They're, I, their happiness is just like, oh, now that everybody yeah. gets engaged now and makes these awesome videos. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, it's so extreme, isn't yes. it? Yes. If somebody's so not there pressure. to record mine, we're going to have a problem. <laughs> I'm like, sir, you better have I need all. you to jump out the parachute and come down on a white horse. Yes. It's so extreme. I need I need something spectacular. Girl. He did ask me, he said, do you want like a big thing with people or just you and I? And I don't mm -hmm. know he how to answer that. propose while I'm washing dishes and I'd be like, yes, baby. <laughs> yes, I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think it matters as long as like it's heartfelt. Yeah. But. You want it nice. You do um, want it nice. Now that everyone is getting rings left and right, mm -hmm. uh, for those lucky ladies that got their rings on their fingers <laughs> and the ones that know that it's coming hopefully <laughs> that's you and i like maybe it'll come soon <laughs> there is uh 
and survey that Zola did that 96% of couples think that planning their wedding was stressful and 86% suffer- suffered stress-induced symptoms oh like goodness. insomnia, breakouts, and low sex drive. Oh, my goodness. All from planning a wedding. So this is when Zola comes in to save you. Zola makes wedding planning easier and less stressful with wedding websites, registry, invites, and a guest list manager all in one place. Have you heard of them? Zola? No. I when know I, about them now. Now we know. <laughs> Let me tell you some more. So basically, they create free wedding website designs. They have register. You can register for gifts, experiences, honeymoon funds. I need hey. that. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you get beautiful and affordable invites and papers that are all designed to match your wedding website. Because I don't know how to do any of that stuff. That's girly <laughs> stuff. I don't know any of that. <laughs> so this is your day, ladies. And if you want it to be like a fairy tale, perfect. Go with Zola. They'll help you collect addresses and track online RSVPs. Because we know we have, um, our people are of color and they don't like to RSVP for things. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to make sure they RSVP and create free guest list manager. So Zola to this day has helped over a million couples get married. Wow. So Right. That's a lot. So they're going to help you too. So you can z- uh, sign up for Zola.com slash Carla30. So that's Z-O-L-A dot com slash Carla30 today and get your free personalized paper sample. Then you use the code SAVE50 to get 50% off your save the dates. And I want one. Wow. If y'all have said, I want to I want to go to weddings. Me too. Somebody, somebody invite me. Somebody get married. Okay. <laughs> yes, somebody get married soon so I can go to a freaking <laughs> wedding. I don't have anybody getting married soon. So anyway, that's Zola.com slash Carla30 and use Promo code SAVE50. I'm going to get married. Yes. I, I, we're going to use Zola. Oh, we're going to use Zola. We're going to use Zola for okay. our wedding. No, we really okay. are. Mm-hmm. I, y'all, wait <laughs> for it. <laughs> so this segment we're going to go into is unsolicited advice. So okay. Sometimes we give advice that they ask for and sometimes that they didn't even ask for. Mm-hmm. And I figured this one we could probably help with a little bit. We've both been through it. So it says, I'm going to need some advice before I lose it. Any advice would be helpful. So I moved out of my marital home March of this year. Last Last year. year. After a two-year cohabitating separation with my ex-husband. The apartment I have is much, much smaller, but it's the best that I could afford at my budget. It's clean and in a nice neighborhood, near their father and his family. I put all my energy into this apartment, making it as homey and nice as I can. Even with all that, my kids hate it here and it's breaking my heart. They want to go home. They want their dad. They think because I am the one that moved out, I wanted this, that I left their dad. I feel like such a horrible mom making them come here. I feel like every time I get over a hurdle, another one comes my way. I feel like giving up. I am so tired. What can I do to get over this hurdle? I know you have been here before and hopefully you can help. My kids are 11, 7, and 5. And my 7-year-old is extremely close and attached to her dad and doesn't have much connection with me. Please help. That broke my heart. So sad. Listen, girl. Oh, my God. Um... That's hard. I feel like as women, we're always blamed for everything. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if it's our fault, if it's not our fault. Right. And I feel like for the person that wrote this, to remember that this is not your fault. Right. And you just have to let the process happen. Because the thing is with our children, we're always trying to save them from this this version that they're going to see of us. We always want to mm-hmm. be the perfect mom. Yeah. We don't want them, you know, because we all have our issues with our own mothers at points and times. Yes. And then we say we're going to have kids and they're not going to have those issues with us. And just accepting the fact that they are. They're going to have an issue and there's nothing that you can do to change that. But she has to just continue to walk with her head up high and trust that they'll see her being a great mother. And one day Mm -hmm. they'll understand. It may not be right now in this moment, but eventually they will understand what's going on. And she Mm -hmm. just has to make sure that she's mentally strong through this process. You have to be strong, especially for the kids. Ayana was um, around six when her dad and I separated. And for years, she's like blamed me. So she wanted daddy around, you know, why did you leave him? You need to buy daddy a house. And I'm just like, what? Because he used to play this whole broke martyr, like, oh, right. I don't have any money and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, right. Well, driving up here in Alexis. Okay. Right. Anywho. So she would blame me for a lot of things. And she, her dad was Superman. And I'm like, you haven't seen this in so long. Right. And you're blaming me for all these things because you're with me 24-7. So basically, I had to learn one day. One day she'll get it. And now, from exactly. six to seven, now she's about to be 15. Now she's kind of getting a slight mm-hmm. hint like, wow, maybe he, he hasn't been around as much. Right. But I don't think she'll really get it maybe until she's 18 or maybe until she has kids of her own. Until I mean, think about your relationship with your mom. I don't think I understood 
how much my mother loved us Mm -hmm. or her family until I became a mom. Right. Because because as mothers, we will literally do anything for our children. And sometimes that means keeping ourselves in bad situations or creating Mm -hmm. narratives around situations that aren't the greatest because we want them to be okay. But at the same time, that's providing a false sense of security, Mm -hmm. you know? And so I always say, you know, you don't bad mouth the other parent, but your children you will can't. see what's going on after, you right. know, it might take them some time. And and it's not know, for it them to is. see anyway. Because no, the kids don't right. need to know They're who not, left who, to know. why they, they just why need you to love guess. both of their parents. Right. So yeah. it's just, they can spend time with the dad. Just, they will like this place. Yeah. It's just going to take some time. Like if you leave this nice house and you end up going to an apartment, it's just something different. It's different. You, you probably could have left to even a house the same size. Mm-hmm. That's still not home yet to them. It's going to take time to be home. And the seven-year-old... And it's really about the dad. They're leaving dad. That's it. It's not really I, about the house. It's when I dad. Started, I'm like, there's yeah. there's no material thing that can take away going to sleep with daddy in the house. If I were her, I would also consider putting eat all of the family and group therapy. Yeah. Her and the kids. Not the ex-husband or whatever, but her and her kids maybe need to go to some form of therapy. Yeah. Therapy's so important. And we don't talk... I, I talk about it a lot on here because mm-hmm. I struggle a lot with mental health. And coming from my family, a very... like. I was born in Puerto Rico. I came mm-hmm. here and it's my parents. I was called crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, my anxiety, my ADD. I'm just like, I had issues yeah. or my anger problems. That was the, no, I'm an extremely anxious person. Mm-hmm. Extremely oh anxious. Gosh. I have, we are panic. like the same person. <laughs> I'm, I'm so telling anxious you. anxious all the time. Like yesterday, when we go into the shit talk, I'll talk about it. But yesterday, I was a, a wreck. Mm-hmm. And it's just, I start creating all these scenarios. My therapist tells me I live in the future. Mm-hmm. So I always live in this fear of maybe failure. I live in it's all these fears, all because yes. I'm not thinking she of today. <laughs> oh, she, she's amazing. And then I'll be like, I don't know why I'm paying you. I know all these things, <laughs> but she has to remind me. <laughs> I'm like, Dude, everything you're telling me, I know, but you got to tell me. That's why I won't go to therapy because I'm like, I already know. I just no. need to implement it. Actually, they help you implement it. So it's not only the fact that they're telling you, they give you steps that you don't even think of. Right. So when I moved to New York. I had, I would come to, I would go to New York every month, right? And I would come back and get into this right when I get back to Orlando. And it was so, I would get so depressed. And she noticed this trend. Mm -hmm. So she said to me around February, January, she's like, this summer, what do you have going on? I'm like, nothing. She's like, well, why don't you move to New York for the summer? I'm like, I can't move to New York. She's like, why not? I'm like, I can't have a kid. Can't you stay with her dad? Can you take her with you? There's no school. I literally made a decision to move to New York because my, I never would have accomplished so many things I did if it wasn't for her. So she comes up with like little things here and there. Why don't you try this? Why don't you try things that I won't even think of? Right. And then it gives you that plan for when you see her in two weeks or whenever, mm-hmm. however often. She's you like your good her. angel, but you don't have a bad angel on the other shoulder. Right. Yeah. Once you're in there, I'll come in there and I'll cry. And she's just like, "Why are you crying? Well, let's figure out why." Because I had when I first started therapy, I had two um, emotions. I was happy or I was angry. That was it. Mm-hmm. She gave me this wheel, uh, emotions wheel. I felt like a fucking idiot. But she's like, look at this wheel. There's like a thousand different emotions. So you just like start with angry and then you like go to the next level and there's like these six things that you can choose from. And then from those things, you choose another one after that. And I'm like, oh, there are all these emotions. Why I feel angry. Me, I was just angry. We're going to fuck you up. Yeah. I was ready. I was happy and then I wanted to fight. Yeah. So yeah, going back to this, just it doesn't matter, you know, what's going on Mm -hmm. with the children. They'll get over it. They'll get over it. And honestly, as raw as you just said that, they're children. Not saying that they don't matter, but I also think we've created this narrative around children that they're glass and they're going to break at the first sight of conflict. They're not. We were, you know, everywhere that we were raised were not, was not always correct. Right. You know, we're learning our mistakes, but we're strong people because right. of that. The children will be okay. The more you try to m- keep them fragile, they're never going to be able to handle conflict. Mm-mm. And unfortunately, can't shelter divorces, them too much. you can't shelter them. Divorce happens. And, right. hope, you know, we all hope that it doesn't, but it does. Right. You have to allow them to handle their own emotions and don't negate their emotions. Understand that they're allowed to feel the way that they feel, but they still need to remain respectful. Some people are like, <laughs> you know, you need to let them. Some people. Certain races. <laughs> but, you know, they let their Mm-mm. kids just, you know, they have to express themselves. You know, they have their own Within mind. Within a respectful way of my house. There's a realm. Yeah, there's a realm of, of expression. Or don't control your kids. It's not control, but I'm going to tell I'm you right from parent. wrong. I'm yeah. yeah. You're not, I don't care how upset you are. You aren't going to talk to me any kind of way. You're not nope. going to scream, yell, or curse. You're not going to act out and say it's because I'm hurt. Figure it out. Right. Or I'll <laughs> figure it out for you. With this fist. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got to figure it out. <laughs> right. There's, we have to just be careful on, I feel like how we're raising our children because we're raising 
we're, are, it's going to be a next generation of adults. We're raising victims. Yes. Everything now, we're raising victims. Everybody's so fucking sensitive. Yeah, everybody's so sensitive. So we're raising sensitive. victimized children to get it's offended. Like, and you just can't. Like, life happens, and this world is not perfect. You have to, you live in an imperfect society, imperfect yes. world. There are things that's going to happen. Deal with it and keep going. That's it. And I always say that we're not raising children. We're raising children that will be adults mm-hmm. in this society. Yes. You know? And things are going to keep evolving then. They're going to keep I evolving. I know Ayana has come to me sometimes. I hate this teacher taking me out of this class because no, somewhere. deal I with it. I will not. Yeah, no. I will not. You will have bosses maybe mm-hmm. one day. You will have employees maybe one day. They're impossible to deal with. You have to learn how to deal with this conflict. If this yeah. teacher is an asshole and doesn't let you go to the bathroom, you make sure you pee before you're in this classroom. Right, exactly. And you have to be very intentional when you go in there. She doesn't want you to talk. Shut up. Yeah, seriously, that's all it is. That's it. You're gonna come across people. I can't. I can't curate the world to be right. perfect around you. If I move you out of that class to an easy teacher, what's gonna? You're happen gonna end up in a class 25? where now you don't like the person who's sitting next to you. I mean, it's just it never. It's always going to be something. Always. You have to learn how to think above that. I completely. That's literally my um, idea when it comes to parenting. Right. And my daughter have a very well behaved child. Mm-hmm. You know, she's seven years old. She's also a Libra. That might have something to do with it. <laughs> I love <laughs> Libra. <laughs> But, you know, she's a very well-behaved child, Mm -hmm. and it's in her nature to be that way. But also, I don't play games with her like that, and I'm a very fun parent. Yeah, you But when I say sit down and be quiet, I need you to sit down and be quiet. I don't care how cute you are. Right. You know what I mean? I don't care what you need to express. If I'm talking to another adult, don't interrupt me. Right. You know, so, and I feel like now those things are like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe you tell your child that. Like, what do you mean? She's a child. She's seven. (laughs) You right. know, how does she feel about this? She feels fine because she's seven, you know? So I think remember this. it's always time and a place. And because of right. that, she's a very well-behaved child. Like, I don't have problems with her. I had, way. Well, Ayanna was very well-behaved. And so she still is. But now, you know, as a teenager, is we're, we're women. now we challenging everything. Shit, I'm 30. <laughs> <laughs> she challenges everything. But I do remember that stage of seven. And it's just going from stage to stage. You'll go from seven mm-hmm. to 10, then to 12. Now, for me, it's 14. Then fit. We have to learn... I have to learn it. So I don't know if you've actually read this book for when you get there. Um, have you, you've heard of the five love languages? Yes, I've read well, it. Well, I push really hard. Yeah. I have, for, you still have a long way to go. But the five <laughs> love love languages of teenagers. Mm-hmm. And I've been now I'm reading again because there's a lot of stories. I know the sun is intense. Um, but it helps a lot with learning like the love language of a teenager, but they have it for kids as well. Mm-hmm. So like to learn what their love language out. is. He's yeah. so good. Well, anyways, we're going to go to our last quick uh, segment and it's my shit talk. Yay, shit talk. <laughs> I was like, shit. <laughs> so, one really quick. We were talking about it before. I'm here in Atlanta, and I know Atlanta has amazing food. You got, we're, like, it's known for the food. It is. We have good food here. Well, I woke up. I woke up super early. I had some consoles by 7 a.m. My friend was sleeping, so I went downstairs to the library or the hotel. And I was like, hey, girl, wake up. Let's go to Waffle House. She's like, all right. I'm like, get ready. I'm so down So mad you came to Atlanta and want to eat Waffle House. That's I just so wanted something really fast and That's come so back to keep working. I, I don't know. I just figured there might be one closed. I'm like, let's just go to Waffle House. I really like Waffle House. I don't know why. Because it's real food. Waffle House is good. Waffle House is so good. But it's Waffle House. I love There's it. There's like the 45 dirt, different options. The dirtier the Waffle House, the better the food taste. Not it's here. just, it's you a proven fact. No. <laughs> if your waitress is missing three teeth, it's going to be <laughs> fire. <laughs> it's going to be so good. Well, we went to this Flying Biscuit place. She's like, oh, no, 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 let's go to Flying Biscuit. It's a shit. I used to live here. That's where you go. They got the best build up. All right. I was just hungry. Whatever. It was breakfast. I see shrimp and grits. And I have never been a grits person. Mm-hmm. But, um... I, there's a place called Peach Valley in Orlando. I don't know if they have it here. And they have the best shrimp. And, oh, my gosh. It's so good. So I was like, oh, well, this is Southern, too. This is going to be good. And they had it under the favorites. It was, on, it was like sp- six favorite things. Not breakfast. Like throughout the whole menu. Mm-hmm. And one of them was shrimp and grits. Mm-hmm. Was this close? Yeah. <laughs> it's so bright. You see, it's like coming. There we go. Okay. I is can it, see uh, now. <laughs> I was going blind. <laughs> yeah, that sun is like literally coming oh right at your face. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, girl, I ordered the shrimp and grits. They came out like soup the first time. The grits were soup. And they're known for their grits there. That's why she was telling they me. They have that really good grits. No. So I sent it back. They brought me back another plate of grits. She's like, oh, that's a new batch. It still was no good. And my friend who was bragging about these grits the entire, she's like, it's the best works. grits. She's like, they didn't even want to eat her. She's like, and told the waitress i'm sitting here talking about these grids and they're no good i don't know who you guys have back you might have a new chef blah blah, blah. so i finally the second time i'm like i'm sorry waitress because i was a waitress at one point and i'm like i'm sorry but i just i can't do it i always turn it on them i'm like does this look like something you want to eat 
Oh, that's a good one. That's a good you one. You know your grits. Do these look like your grits? She said it too. She said, yeah, this, they're a little, all oh, the little too watery. I thought the new batch might be something, but no, it was no good. So then I was like, let me get bacon, egg, and a biscuit, and I'll be good to go. You can't go wrong with You that, can't right? go wrong with bacon. You can't <laughs> yeah. go wrong with the egg. So I ate that. So flying biscuit sucks. Okay, hold on. Flying biscuit doesn't necessarily suck. And I had the biscuit it with the chicken sausage gravy. It, it had no it's flavor. Like, it's like Atlanta food, right? So there are places in Atlanta because we have really good food. Yeah. Flying biscuit is an Atlanta staple. But when you went in there, how many black people did you see? Oh, you're right. There weren't a lot of I them. I should have known her Chef half white Chris. ass would have sent me to the white place. I was about to ask what color your friend was. But... Flying Biscuit is one of those places where the food is good, but it's not very, it's not super flavorful. So that's it's not just good. their thing. So what's good well, about it's, it? It's kind of like. The eggs? It, it's kind of like red Kool-Aid. Like red Kool-Aid <laughs> is red Kool-Aid. You know, an apple's an apple. Flying Biscuit is Flying Biscuit. It's not the place, <laughs> it's like not the best, <laughs> but it's not the place you go. Shrimp and grits, you want to make sure somebody grandma on the back cooking shrimp and grits. You're right. And so even like I told you about Homegrown, anybody who knows about Atlanta, Homegrown has some of the best breakfast I'm going there tomorrow morning. Homegrown is a white establishment. But oh, wait, what? Hold on. It's a white place, but, but it's some country southern white. white. It's okay. southern white, right? And you're going to go in there, you're going to see a whole bunch of black people in there. You're going <laughs> to see a whole bunch of everybody. But And it looks like a shack honestly those are the best places that's the best place it's like and it's you know it's not far from here but that's yeah that's fine when this you goes in a fancy place i was mm-mm, like mm-mm, 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 you don't want to go get breakfast no it's a nice and i want Atlanta mac and cheese for breakfast staple. yes the mac and cheese is the bomb oh, okay? okay but if there's certain things that you have to make sure you order from the right place it's like mac and cheese you don't go to olive garden and order mac and cheese no. and expect your grandma's mac and cheese mm-mm. that's how flying biscuit is but you like olive garden right Does yeah i do now? i love the olive garden is olive garden flying biscuit is flying biscuit but gotcha. it's not the place that you go to for like Shrimp that's never a place i would tell somebody to go to and be like that's atlanta's food no it's flying biscuit <laughs> <laughs> that's it that's for y'all locals <laughs> yeah that's flying biscuit sometimes <laughs> just in there okay yeah, so there. that i'll try homegrown tomorrow i was really upset about this flying biscuit really mostly towards mandy because she was I'm hyping it up that you ask somebody who don't live for no more about food if she ain't currently she was, in Atlanta, I didn't even ask her about it. I said Waffle House, and she's been here for seven years. I should, yeah, she don't even eat. If you go out tonight and y'all are looking for food, you're going to wait 19 years, but it's a place called Escobar. It is in... Is it Shack 2? No. Oh. It's in Castleberry Hills. I don't know what But that you're going to wait an hour and a half for your food. Nah. But they have... So, or call ahead of time. They have the best... The best food. What's it called? Escobar. Escobar. I believe it's Escobar, yeah. It's Escobar over in Castleberry Hills okay, off I'm Peter Street. It it's really good. <laughs> well, mm-hmm. I love to eat. Like, Me too. I'm a fat I'm girl a at heart. Ooh, love it. So the other only thing that I wanted to talk about was I saw it a lot, and I, I am releasing these tomorrow, and I didn't want to touch too much on the whole Kobe thing because it's mm-hmm. everywhere, but I did want to touch, touch on one aspect of it. Mm-hmm. You know, the episode I posted um today for mindful monday does talk about being grateful and i've been wanting to do it for mm-hmm. about two weeks i've had this gratitude over life in the past like a couple of months but especially in the last few weeks when i felt really low mm-hmm. i've been really really low mentally and i've been trying to get out of it for the past couple of days and i just had to just be very grateful in the mornings when i wake up so y'all can listen to that other episode so i'm not gonna go into that but i started seeing a lot of memes because you know right now all social media is kobe and saw some posts about how the rest of the families that were on that helicopter weren't being acknowledged. People yeah. weren't praying for them. Then I go on live and someone was upset about it. And I get it. But at the same time, Kobe was Kobe. And I want people to understand we lost someone that impacted the world. Mm-hmm. Those people, don't get me wrong, the rest of the the victims, they're not victims. What are they? The Another, I mean, they're victims of the crash. Yeah, the victims yeah. of the crash, yeah. I guess. They were important. They were the world to their family. They were the world to their friend. Mm-hmm. So I don't think anyone has not not thought of them. It's just they didn't impact the world. Right. So when I lost my father, my my world stopped. You know, right. he was my world. I don't expect the Staples Center or the Empire State Building to, you know, have my father's name on mm-hmm. it. So we have to understand it. Not, I think not social media gets so fake outraged over this excuse me just to do a post Mm -hmm. just to say oh my god and be different like we oh my goodness we just saw a meme about how kobe and his daughter had the same birthday they created a whole meme it was a lie i was like you guys just want clicks you want something to post something to say so i think it would suck for that family that those people were their world for you to say hey they're not being acknowledged because they are they are they i think they recognize that who they were on that helicopter with mm-hmm. was kobe bryant 
Yeah. What's Kobe and his and his daughter who are were on the limelight? Like Vanessa posted them so often. Mm-hmm. That relationship to me, he I think he came here for so many things into this world to create such, such an impact. Mm-hmm. But I believe that he was one of those great men that showed that relationship between a father and a daughter. Yeah. And I have such a a soft spot in my heart and in my entire life of what a father and a daughter should be. Cause I had, I, do you have a daughter? I have a daughter mm-hmm. that doesn't have the relationship that I had with my dad. Yeah. So it breaks me apart every single day. I blame myself every single day. I feel like anything she goes through, I have to like patch it because I wasn't able to give her that. Mm-hmm. So Kobe showed so many men nowadays, you know, this is how you treat your daughter. You didn't have to have a son. God did not give him a son. Right. You know, and I saw an interview where she people would tell him in front of her, like, oh, my God, you need a son to carry the legacy. I don't know if you saw it. Like, it's like I have all these daughters. How do you just disrespect my family? Right. Like so they would tell her that, tell him that in front of her, like, who's going to carry your legacy? And she would tell him, I'm here. I got this. I'm, do- I'm the legacy. Mm-hmm. And now they're both gone. It's like, to me, when it first happened or we first heard about it, I was at this live show this business show, and I told Mandy, when it first started reports a daughter might be there, I said to her, it was that one. I know it was that daughter. I know they were together, Mm -hmm. and I bet you had something to do with basketball. And she's like, well, you don't know, it could have been the other one. I said, if not, I wouldn't hope, because it's not a hope or I'm not happy that it was her. Those aren't the words, but if it would have been anyone, it had to have been that daughter. Mm -hmm. You know, like, that that was that bond. So I don't want anyone to think anymore, you know, that that family is not being recognized or acknowledged or no one's praying for them because we are. It's just the impact in our life that Kobe Bryant, especially for our generation, yeah. is huge. Yeah, we, were, we grew up with him. We definitely grew up with him. So, you know, it wasn't necessarily talking shit to y'all. It's just I saw that and it, it didn't sit well with me yeah. for us to do that. So has anything happened to you recently? You want to talk some shit about it? Anybody piss you off? Anybody, anybody say something? Mm. Here's the thing. <laughs> when well, black woman starts you. with, here's the thing. It's so funny. I was talking to my friend about this today. We were talking about irritations with people. <laughs> As an entrepreneur, I don't have to leave my house. So everybody that I spend time with is by my choice. Very much and so. And I stay home, especially when it's cold outside. I don't go outside. Who wants to deal with this? And so it's kind of like when you're home for a few days by yourself and you walk into a grocery store and you have to talk to people and you're like, whoa, this is different. So no, I keep a very low temperament, but it's by Mm -hmm. choice. I don't, I don't have to go out and entertain with people that I don't want to be around, or I don't have to sit here and answer to a boss. I answer, I am the boss, and you know what I mean. And so everything that I do in my life is literally, I try to keep it by intention. Yes, you should. So I've kept a very low stress pole. I think uh, January, February is always tough for entrepreneurs because it's so slow. Mm -hmm. And so every year I freak out around this time, and I think my whole world is melting. I'm like, my business (laughs) is falling apart. Nobody wants to give me any money. I'm broke. I'm poor. I gotta go (laughs) get a job. And so I start to freak out. Literally, I freak out. Out. every year oh, and every so year bad. every year i'm like oh you know not plan for this time thank god i can plan to be financially okay and everything mm-hmm. taken care of but i freak out every year january february and you would think this is my sixth year being an entrepreneur in wow. some form so you know it's you going would think to that by now i would like let it's it go not. but no i still freak out about it every time um and so no i don't have any shit to talk i'm trying to think do i got some shit to give y'all here's some shit give me some shit i'll give you some shit okay (laughs) here's my here's my 30 year old shit i'm in a place of peace and anybody Mm -hmm. who interrupts that peace i get rid of them i don't even like hesitate i'm not trying to figure it out i'm just like "Mm, that's not working out anymore and you might think i'm the biggest bitch on the planet (laughs) and i've been you know it's one of those things but at this point in my life if it does not fit into my life or if it brings me any type of uh any feelings of Goodbye. of anything you gotta go mm-hmm. and so recently i was kind of put in a situation like that with someone that i knew and i it i was just like hey sis wish you the best but gotta go <laughs> and Bye. you have to yeah you can't compromise like i still do that sometimes i compromise like my yeah. own piece and i have to be a little bit more sort of like i don't want it mm-hmm. but i don't leave my house yeah, I, don't I, I have my studio I'm my house. very much a homebody yes <laughs> I, if it's not food or the bus stop I'm normally especially in the cold wait the, you don't drive no I why live in, I live in the city I what live that in the city everything I work from home my daughter goes to a great school the Marta's right across the street I take Uber I live a block away from Whole Foods I don't go anywhere. Stop. This is a trip for me. Okay. So you don't like you <laughs> no. don't have a car to get it. You don't go on road trips for what? There's airplanes. Anything over four hours, I'm not. You're right. Yeah. I mean, but I can't. Oh, it's so hard to not have a car. No, it's not. <laughs> 
Not when you live in the city. It's like New York. Maybe. Like, so well, I didn't have a car for the three months. I was in the train right. the whole time. So if I'm where I live in Atlanta, you mm-hmm. know, being here, Atlanta can be pretty spread out. But if you're in the city, everything's right here. Okay. And because I work from home, there's literally coffee shops. There's restaurants. There's, you know what All I mean? Walking distance? Everything's walking distance. Okay. That makes it's sense. Close. In New York, I didn't miss a car. Yeah, no. At all. See here, I don't miss. I mean, I've been to Orlando. I've been to Miami. In Orlando, you, you need a car. It's hard to live in those places without yeah. a car. Everything's very neighborhoody. Mm-hmm. But even if you see driving through the city, everything's right there. Yeah, it is. You know what I mean? Right. So like even this, like this is my my friend's place. I Ubered here. It was five bucks. So it's really close. Get out of here. In the city. Oh, that's not bad at yeah, all. Yeah, no. And the way I look at it too, you know, I live in Midtown. So people are like, why do you pay so much for rent? And I'm like, well, when you think about it, I don't pay for a car. So mm-hmm. looking at a car, you got car note, car insurance, gas, maintenance, parking. You're looking at $700 easy a month. Um, Anywhere from five to $700 right. for a car. I don't pay that because I'm good. I live right where right. I live. And also I look at it like for the time, it's just me and my daughter. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to be in a house in the suburbs. I didn't want to maintain yeah. that. I want to be in a place that was convenient, that was close, that was safe. You know what I mean? I would have loved to do that, but I, you know, I've had my house now for twelve years. Oh, I've girl. never had that. I had the experience. Where I I'm scary. Have. If I can't see the door from my bed, I got a problem. Really? Oh, I'm scared. I don't like big spaces. I don't need upstairs, downstairs. I need something small, tight, and together. If you coming into my house, I need to see what's going on. Oh wow! So, yes, I'm that person. No, I like small space. spaces. I want her to, like this. <laughs> no, I want her to be out of my space. So my apartment, it's a little bigger than this, um, and we have another room. But it's set up, it's like a one and a half mm-hmm. bedroom. So when you walk in, the front is like a studio. I have a big bookshelf that divides. And then my bed is all windows around. And then we have a tiny little hallway. And then it's my daughter's it's room. It's like a, like a big city place. It's a big city place. I've it's been perfect. like this. And I went to somebody else's yesterday. Mm-hmm. And it's all these windows. Yeah, we have so windows. Beautiful. We do windows here. I have windows that surround my whole bed area. And so I wake up to the sun. I go to sleep to the moon. And it's perfect. Like, And that's for no me. And I'm on the 10th so floor. It's just like this. It's high up. I get to look see at the sunset all. on one side. I get to see the buildings on the other side. I got plants all around my my balcony area. It's just it works. That's that, that sounds that mm-hmm. sounds so peaceful. It's nice. It's like it's like a little solace in the city. Yeah, I like know? it. <laughs> I, I I actually I love Atlanta. But when I get married, I'm gonna move into. Oh house. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but that's it's cities oh, aren't for families. It's coming, so she'll be in the suburbs soon. Guys. I'll be in the suburbs very soon, y'all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well anyways this wraps up thank you so much for coming thank now i know you. you have some events coming out so i want you mm-hmm. to put everything that you have coming because i do have a lot of atlanta Atlanta's my number two city oh okay so listeners. listen i'm gonna look at the camera for this one if you're watching <laughs> if you're in atlanta starting february 1st we're doing our menstrual drive where we collect tampons pads and menstrual cups yes. for a local homeless shelter here in atlanta you can either send your donations in directly through amazon through our wish list or you can drop them off in one of our atlanta drop-off locations we normally partner with like urban grind happy mango and kirkwood um vibe ride those places so you can send in a uh, your tampons pass or menstrual items and then on february 29th we're doing our period party and so it's an educational event where we're going to have women come out and talk to you all about your menstrual cycles how the products you use and the foods you eat can affect your period and also natural family planning fibroids we have chef ikey coming out patrice from the honey pot and we have our very own rn that's going to be talking to you about your vaginal health very important I need to bring on a vaginal health woman. Girl, I'll send thing. you some people because I know some. Send me some. I've been thinking about it for a long time because I always also want to do, you know, some. I'll talk about it later. <laughs> but yeah, I do. And I told you, I just I, don't, I just got my first period. I'm dealing yes. with this whole thing. I yes. don't know. I don't know what's y'all, going on. Y'all, she told me that she didn't know that you can flush tampons. I had to just tell y'all. Girl, all that. when it I has been 15 y'all, years. <laughs> I have cl- I clogged both my toilets the past oh, in two yeah, weeks. No. I and my boyfriend's like he has seven sisters, so I'm like yeah. The temple he's like what do you what you do? I'm like I flushed it. He goes you're not supposed. To. I'm like what are you talking about? He goes every girl knows this. I had no idea. <laughs> no, I knew a pad you don't flush. Yeah, no. but I thought the whole purpose of a tampon was to just Mm-mm. take it out and drop it. And I feel okay. I want to ask you something really quick before we finish this up. Tell so after okay, well you haven't had a period in 15 years. After having my daughter mm-hmm. or before having my daughter, all I wore were tampons. But I was also 20, 21. I didn't believe okay. in pads. And after having my daughter, my vagina was just like no. And so I started wearing pads. Um, but then pads were irritating me because mm-hmm. I didn't know, but the ingredients in certain pads were causing irritation. Right. So I switched over to natural pads. Then I mm-hmm. switched over to the menstrual cups. Do you feel like after having a child? Those? Oh, yeah. I love them. So I had a C-section. Oh, okay. So you had no issue. Yeah, so I'm still a virgin. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 that. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> what did you just say? <laughs> okay, Mary. <laughs> All right, Mary. 
nothing's ever come nothing's out of that ever thing. come out of my I've vagina. I've never had sex. Listen, <laughs> I had a natural birth. No, I would love to have a natural birth. So if. When, if or when I yeah. decide to have another child, I'm going to see and go the route of finding maybe a doula or, so, or a doctor that would help me yeah. have a natural birth because I had an awful like experience with my C-section. Really? Yeah. The it's only, super tiny, but it was bad. But the only thing I think about a C-section is when I was pregnant, I was like, oh, I could have them cut it out because then everything will stay tight. <laughs> yeah. But mine was emergency. I meant to have a regular, so it was emergency. Yeah. But it was tight. But it does it really get loose? Tight? No. No, I feel I mean, like it goes that's, back. that's definitely, I think, something that it's women myth, are told. Right? It's a myth. It's a muscle. I'm doing yeah. Kegels right now. <laughs> We start talking about it, and I start squeezing. So it's a muscle. If you're feeling like it's a little loose down there, it's a few things. You can do your yeah. Kegels. And also, it could just mean that you're not properly turned on enough. Because when you are, right. your vagina naturally contracts. It like psh- It's like, woo, I want to keep that. Yeah. <laughs> so your body, you know, when women are, and I'm, I know we're going in a whole different element because I could talk about sex all day in the right Really? Form when it, yeah, when it comes oh, to vag- need- vaginal health for women oh. and teaching women how to properly orgasm and feel like, because we have sex for, with our partners and it's all about them. Oh, and it's like, no. what about me? That's, this is what I love about this new relationship. Yeah. This man is a thousand percent a pleaser. And I've never had come this. For, come first. Yes. Okay. A million times. <laughs> it's just like, he doesn't even, he's like, as long as you're good. And mm-hmm. when I tell you attention from head to toe, <laughs> I never thought that was possible. Oh yeah. It's, it's very possible. <laughs> it's, it's pretty it's fucking possible. amazing. <laughs> I was like, but I've it's never had you learning before. your body too. A For lot sure. of women don't know. They don't look in the mirror. They don't mm-hmm. touch themselves. And those toys are the devil. What? Girl, huh? toys. They ain't gonna say they all the way what? to the devil, but they're, you gotta stay away from those. Think about it. Think about the fact that if you use a toy, okay, I use them together. Well, together, that's good. But for women who, let's say, are single who aren't in relationships and all they want to do mm-hmm. is pull out that 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 uh, vibrator, that's all I do. and <laughs> it's like this is the, it kills the sensation down Listen, there. When and I you tell forget. you. I have gotten to the point before where I would use it so much that if he touched me, I didn't feel nothing. It was like he was touching my elbow. Anything. Literally touch my vagina yeah. and touch my elbow, same thing. Same thing. And so you have to kind of be careful with the you toys be because it'll, it'll kill the sensation and you're wondering why your partner can't make you come. Your partner doesn't require AA batteries. <laughs> okay. Wow. The vibrator is killing your life. No, yeah. I Because I enjoy, you know, my new partner now. I try not to. I'm like he's yeah, like oh stay away well, from he's because we're long distance right now. Mm-hmm. So he's like he's, I was like you know what no Mine is I don't want to. Too. Is it? Yes. 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 We have so yeah. we have so much in common yeah. right now. It's and so I still corny. stay away from the toys. I tried to no. Yeah. I still he well see he gets the. He just gave me a whole box of toys. And every time he sees me, he gives me a new fucking toy. I'm like, stop it. Stop with the it's toys. His thi- but he's sponsored by like a toy thing. Oh, so yeah. he literally, I just, <laughs> I was just there a couple days ago and he busts out this whole bag of, I was like, what are you doing? We're not using that one or that one or that what one. What does he do? Never mind. <laughs> we ain't even what? He's sponsored by a toy company. That, we're not going to talk about that on no, the podcast. It's, for, it's, 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 a, it's a pod. It's, he has a podcast. Oh, well. okay. Okay. So they just, he just had the whole Doc Johnson person. It's a mess. Got you. So yeah, I'm staying away from the toys. We have to, we'll have to do this again for the women's health because I feel like, like I can't use my hands. I can. <laughs> I've never, been, I've never been able to. It literally, using my fingers is like touching my elbow too. You literally have to start over. I had to deprogram my brain from toys and from porn a little bit because I got to a point where I was like, oh, I want to watch porn. And I, I talked about this on one of my on my retreat last year, mm-hmm. and I told the women was we talked about pleasure, mm-hmm. and we had a whole session on orgasm. Really? At my retreat, yes. And so I told them because a lot of times, like we're envisioning maybe something we've done with somebody else or we're mm-hmm. watching porn and without that stimulation we don't know what to do and i right. tell women to have sex with yourself like you're having sex with somebody else take a nice hot bath light some candles put on some sexy lingerie and lay in the bed and just touch yourself rub on your nipples rub on I your body feel... a little bit you, you're gonna it's a it's a relearning process Literally. and every time you do it you may not come right away it might feel a little silly but you have to just sit there and you know feel around your walls like just touch yourself mm-hmm. until it starts to feel good because it will but it's a training process Process. And I would say Ooh. literally twice a week, have sex with yourself. Twice Make it week. romantic. Okay. And then after about some time, if you're having a hard time, how long do you think pleasure, it'll take to rewire your brain? I mean, sometimes I can masturbate for 30 to 45 minutes. No, no, no. I mean, to rewire. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Listen, let me tell you something. You know how long it takes me? 
30 seconds. No, see, that's the problem. 30 seconds. You're I, I'm missing quick. all the foreplay. You're missing because you're going to with the mindset of I have to come. Yeah, I you're turn the point. I fast cl- forward. No, exactly. The, I fast no. forward to the middle where it's going ham. Where it's going ham, right? 30 and seconds. You're, like, you're planning in your brain. You're like, I have to do it now. But you, you're missing the foreplay. And that's why your fingers don't feel good. Uh, because and when I tell you that's a whole different kind of orgasm. Really? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> It's a whole different, but it works in couple situations because think about it. When you're with your partner, you don't fast forward to 30 seconds. No, you want it to last. All. But if you're not used to doing that with somebody, because you're not even used to doing it with yourself, you don't right. know what feels good. So you have to think of an orgasm, not as the end goal, mm-hmm. but the best part of the orgasm is leading up to the orgasm. Because the orgasm is only what? 30 seconds. Literally. It's 30 seconds and it's over. You think I want to feel good for 30 seconds. I want to feel good for 45 minutes. And that end goal, yeah. I'm just going to sleep. <laughs> I'm out. Yeah, yeah. I'm, so I, there's, I'm opposite. The second that it's over, I have so much energy. Oh no, I have. If I have too much energy, you did a bad job. If I want to no, go ride I'm my bike afterwards, we sweat in where I can't walk, but I'm like, <sighs> it depends. I, I feel that. Okay, that's I, that's he yeah. is like done. He's like life is over. Yeah, and now I'm like not energized where I want to go run a mile, mm-hmm. but I'm just like, let's talk. Yeah, <laughs> let's watch a movie. Let's so do how things. was this? Yes, let's play a game. No, let's like. <laughs> Can or, we do it again? Yeah, I'm gonna get a no. Can we do it again? I get the give me a minute. You know, a minute means mm-hmm. in the morning. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> give me a couple hours. I want to keep going. I'm the type. I want to do it on the phone. I want to do it on the phone. Video. I'm sorry. I'm scared of doing a video. I'm scared of phone sex. Just don't show your face unless you trust them. Um. Oh, like sending videos. You mean? Oh, I have to work on that. I get so shy. Yeah, but I'm telling you, give yourself twice a week. And I think it would take not long, maybe like a month. I'll say maybe. To it took me, yeah, it took me a while to rewire my brain. But okay. after that, I kind of left the porn alone. I left the toys alone. And I have a toy. So every blue moon, I might pull it off. Pull I just want some quick like that. Right. But I literally prepare my mind for masturbation. I'm going to start rewiring. Rewiring. I'm, I'm going to like unplug mm-hmm. and rewire just and see how long it. this takes. And your vagina responds differently. Because, you know, I'm always in my head. Mm-hmm. So it, when I've tried me it, too. I'm in my head so hard. I'm like, yes. So st- and me too. A minute. And I'm like, this is so stupid. Yeah, it feels stupid. I'll just wait till I get some dick. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> just, I'm telling you, just don't, don't have coming as the goal. Just kind of keep okay. it in that, you know? All right. We'll do yeah. that. Well, another, thank you for coming on the show. I, this ah, we can talk forever. We have so much in common and we didn't even know. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much. And I will see you back next week. Goodbye. Bye. So that's a wrap. Thank you so much for tuning in to the show this week. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you would like to connect with Shanisha, I have all of her information tagged on the description of the show. Also, don't forget that tomorrow, Wednesday, uh, January 29th, 8 o'clock, sign up for the free webinar on podcasting, how to launch your podcast in 30 days. That will also be in the description. Make sure that you share with your friends and also tag me on social media or tweet me. They're both at Carla Bomares. I seriously love to hear um, what you have to say about everything, what you enjoyed the most, what your thoughts were, even what you might even disagree with me on. Like say, hey girl, I hate the fact that you said A, B, C, Andy, because y'all know I like to debate somebody. <laughs> but no, just let me know. I want to hear it. Don't forget to rate and review if you haven't yet the podcast. It helps me so much. And I'm so grateful for every single one of you that have already left reviews and have rated the podcast on Apple Podcasts. Now enjoy the rest of your week and I will see you again next week. Goodbye.